my name is Tana Hedleston and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how Native American culture has been misappropriated by American popular music. Unfortunately, the misappropriation of Native culture is not by any means a new topic. Since the European settlers first accidentally landed on North America, indigenous people have been subjected to centuries of prejudice, racism, discrimination, and many other appalling acts. Non-Native people have always been fascinated by Native American culture, but have also always been poorly educated about it, resulting in Native culture being greatly misappropriated. So to begin, I wanted to start with a simple definition of what cultural misappropriation is. Cultural misappropriation is essentially the stealing of a culture's commodities and ideas by a member of another culture. There's a difference between being inspired by one's culture and stealing another culture's ideas for personal gains or to create stereotypes. So, for example, there are several sporting mascots that use a Native American stereotype as the representation of their team. For example, Washington's professional football team, their mascot is the Redskins. And, I mean, high schools all over the country are also guilty of this. There's one in my home county who their high school mascot is the savages, the savages. So the mascots of both of these teams are, you know, offensive in cultural misappropriation. And they, to add on to that, they're also dressed in stereotypical regalia like feathers and headdresses, which are also offensive to many native people. So native culture has always been misappropriated for centuries due to different medias, such as art, cinema, dance, entertainment, literature, and especially music. So when a non-native person takes on the ident identity or the role of a Native American by imitating native culture, this is called playing Indian. A prime example of this is, you know, children growing up on playgrounds playing cowboys and Indians, like they've seen in old Western shows, which is another outstanding uh, example of playing Indian. But, um, like another one is the reenactment of first Thanksgiving. When I was in kindergarten, I remember dressing up as a pilgrim while some of my other classmates dressed up as Indians. And we all sat down and ate turkey and at lunch and reenacted the first Thanksgiving without learning, you know, the actual facts of the day uh, and, or the holiday. But uh, there's also even individuals dress up as Native Americans on Halloween. These are all examples of playing Indian because a non-Native person is taking it upon themselves to assume the identity of a Native person. They're, they're dressing like them, they're acting like them, and it, they're not. It's not okay. But a form of playing Indian that includes a non-Native person impersonating Native American identity through inauthentic song is called singing red face. So the music usually incorporates negative racial stereotypes into the lyrics. And while singing red face, many performers also dress in the stereotypical native regalia like headdresses, headbands, feathers, war paint, etc. But a prime example of a song that adequate, adequately signifies singing red face is Loretta Lynn's song, Your Squaw is Going on a Warpath. Even just the title contains negative racial stereotypes in extreme, but the gist of the song is about a drunken man, uh, often referred to as Big Brave Chief, who comes home to his wife, who is also referred to as a squaw, which essentially means a hysterical, uncontrollable native woman. But anyway, she is overcome with rage due to his infidelity and goes on a warpath, which essentially means a raging, uncontrollable fit. So aside from the lyrics and the gist of the song, which, I mean, contain several negative racial stereotypes, like a drunken man, an uncontrollable native woman, but uh, Loretta Lynn took it a step further when she actually posed for a picture for an album cover of that song where she's dressed in stereotypical native regalia consisting of a short buckskin dress, a headband, a beaded necklace, and a tomahawk. So that is also very distasteful and a prime example of, uh, you know, playing Indian and singing Red Face with the song. 
but the issue the issue of intim in, oh, the issue of imitation has not only been faced by Native Americans but also by African Americans. Originating in the early 19th century, blackface minstre er, minstrelsy was one of the first forms of American entertainment. This consisted of minstrels wearing exaggerated makeup, costumes, etc., while performing shows as what they uh, perceived as African American culture, like in front of audiences in a mockery fashion. So they would essentially paint their faces black and get up there and sing and dance, you know, offensive, uh, what they called slave songs and just really mock the culture of African Americans and you know that's what they deemed it meant to be African American but uh, a very well-known character from this time is Jim Crow who was created by Thomas Rice who is credited as the father of uh, minstrelsy but they would tr transform themselves you know by painting and dressing and then they would sing and dance in a demeaning way to, you know, just really take away what it meant to be African American. But both singing red face and black face minstrelsy were uh, created by white people in an attempt to imitate another person's culture in a stereotypical and offensive fashion, usually for the entertainment of others. But Actions like these are certainly to blame for cultural misappropriation, and this has consequences such as racial antipathy, idealized sympathy, and cultural confusion. So racial antipathy is essentially bigotry directed toward a person or a group of people solely due to their ethnicity. American popular music contributes to racial anti antipathy <laughs> by incorporating negative racial lyrics that promote stereotypes. So some examples of racial antipathy is the portrayal of Native Americans in Western films. Portraying natives as bloodthirsty savages and um, many other terrible things, this influences people's opinions of them, which can influence how people treat Native members, you know, usually with hostility if they're portrayed as bloodthirsty savages. But uh, songs also use demeaning words like Indian giver and squaw like Loretta Lynn, which I mentioned before, that belittle Native Americans and it continues to aid the stereotypes that were formed long ago. But um, unlike the blatant use of offensive words like racial antipathy, idealized sympathy acts to greatly sympathize and attempt to bring attention to issues faced by Native Americans. Although this sounds helpful, it is still a person speaking for members of a different culture. So it does not fully represent the authentic Native culture in, in their story. So uh, idealized sympathy obscures the Native movement of any progress that could be made because it is expressed in a way that is just buried in sympathy. A prime example is uh, one of Marvin Rainwater's songs, The Pale Face Indian. In this song, the lyrics hint toward a hint toward the eradication of the Cherokee Nation, that essentially the nation went extinct. And although they did suffer a great loss, the song inaccurately exaggerates their loss and hides the overall purpose. In like instead of instead of um, talking about that purpose, it just focuses on sympathy. So um, finally, the overall consequence of all these terms, playing Indian, singing red face, racial antipathy, idealized sympathy, is cultural confusion. This is the result of misappropriation and misrepresentation that creates a loss of identity for Native Americans. Um, Native Americans uh, are confused on who they are personally in the history of their people. Like, if you consider a young Native American in a public school, or even, as I stated before, I grew up in a very, you know, small town, so I went to small schools, and the majority of my history teachers were football coaches who didn't know a whole lot about history and were just there to coach football. So, 
I mean, my his history lesson about Pocahontas was from the animated Disney movie. And I took that as the gospel truth because, I mean, I watched it in school. It had to be true, right? It was in history class. And I didn't learn the truth about, you know, she was 14 until my freshman year of college. So imagine, you know, Native Americans who were listening to this and reenacting the first Thanksgiving and thinking how, you know, how great that was and pilgrims and Indians together. It's, you know, it's a disservice to them because they don't learn the truth. They don't learn their history. And it's not even just a disservice to young Native Americans, but it's a disservice to um, everybody because, I mean, cultural misappropriation I mean, a lot of the times it is, you know, intentional that create the stereotypes, but some people don't know what they're doing wrong because they're not taught the history. You know, they're not taught how to respect their culture or, you know, the aspects that make their culture special. They're just taught an animated Disney princess and a fairy tale. But that's why it is so important for people to educate themselves and to learn about cultures and you know, they can fix or correct their prejudiced ways if they do have them. And it's, I mean, for cultural confusion, uh, they deserve every right to know who they are, the history of their people, where they came from, what they did. And even, I mean, it shouldn't be sugar-coated. They should know what they went through because this helps them, you know, know who they are. And that's why, uh, like, rebel music is such a powerful you know, um, it brings people together and really just says, this is who we are. And it's really making a difference in many people's lives. It's giving young Native Americans really positive influences, you know, and they can teach them and they can, like, have a role model to look up to and be that for another kid. So it's really important that people educate themselves and, you know, cultural misappropriation is not okay. They have, Native Americans have such a rich culture and there's so many different, um, different nations, you know, and not a single one of them is the exact same. So it's important to know the difference. It's important to know names. It's important to have a well-rounded education of who they are as people and not just, they're not just Indian is my point, but, um. Anyway, thank you. <laughs>